Hey everyone, welcome back to Civil Tech Source. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to model porous paving in Causeway Flow. Now, porous paving is similar to the rain garden with the only difference it doesn't have above ground storage. And if you remember in my previous tutorial, and if you have not watched it, I'll leave in the link description below. Basically, we have an above ground storage where the water can accumulate and stay. And then we have the filter depth where it filters through and then it leaves the rain garden in the porous paving storage structure basically we don't have the above ground storage and all we have is the filter depth or let's call it the storage element and you can model the under drain pipe which is basically this pipe here now there are a few things that we will cover and without further ado let's jump in To model a porous paving, it's the same steps as modeling a pond. You need an inlet pipe without a downstream link and you need an outlet one. In my case, I'm going to use manhole three as my outlet. So I need another junction in my preference. You can do catch bit if you're starting from catch bit to catch bit. And that will be my basically my distance from basically where the car park will start because porous paving usually is in car park and this is where it ends so basically it will take that kind of shape now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna link the two together first and the reason i'm linking them together is because i want to get the length so the length is let's have a look where is the length it should tell me somewhere the length 39. 684 so i'm just gonna say 39.5 so now what we're gonna do is go to add flow through structure we're gonna drop down and go to porous paving we're gonna left click on our outlet and then select our inlet and then right click to close now you can see automatically created this and you can see there is a link that connects those two which basically if we click on it and let's go in the settings before we start talking about it so the under drain diameter so if we go back to this shape the under drain pipe so the pipe of the porous paving so let's start with 150 that's in millimeters the under drain pipe ks for surface water the ssg says 0.6 the under drain length is 39.5 now the slope what i would recommend is when you're modeling and let's bring back the 3d basically if you know your cover level and the bottom of the pipe invert level that you're starting from because it's a junction and it's not connected you cannot control the invert level so what i would recommend is figure out what's your invert level so you can specify it here because the invert level here is the invert level of number three so in my case i'm just going to keep it 350 because it doesn't make much difference to me and then we have the under drain height above base now similar to the rain garden basically if we bring this up if your pipe is above the base that means you need to have infiltration because otherwise you will have water stuck in your network so and i'll show that and causeway added a measurement for that so if i do not point one and then just leave it as that you can see that it says red because it says infiltration from porous paving must be non-zero so if i change that to zero and get out that screens out because my pipe is right at the bottom so water can flow out of that pipe now i'm gonna go specify my depth so let's say usually my porous paving is 450 usually i specify i'm gonna keep the area the same i'm gonna remove the, any infiltration and yeah i'll keep it 450 for now. now if i go to 3d you can see that i've got my junction star pipe and then i've got my outlet which is a node I could have left as a junction, but usually you have a catch pit before you get out, just so you can be able to rod and maintain backwards the pipe. As we discussed in the previous tutorial in the rain garden, you need to make sure that that invert is correct. So what do I mean by that? So if I close this one and go to the sketch, and let's say this one, it says 1.2 depth. So if I change that to, let's say something crazy, 97, just, and let's look at the 3D, can see the porous paving automatically became deeper and we said in the previous tutorial that the upstream invert level of the outlet pipe dictates the depth of the node that means it will dictate the depth of the flow through structure that means 
either we have two options. We put the correct invert level that we want, because you can see here went all the way to three meters, or we specify an invert level here. So in my case, if it's 100, that means a 99.5 for 450. Actually, yeah, uh, 550, there we go. So if I go to 3D, you can see that that is my porous uh, paving, and then we have the outlet pipe. However, that is not how they usually build porous paving. So we're going to try and simulate what they actually built. Because the pipe under a permeable car park or under light load needs to have a minimum cover of, I remember top of my head, 900 mil. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to create that. So we're going to go with from zero depth. We're going to go the area you will have to do some math for it. So let's bring our trusty paint for it. So if we have that many rows, and uh, actually let's me create a car park. So copy. So let's say you have a number of car parks. Ignore my sketching skills. So you've got, let's say, that many number of car parks. And then you have a pipe that runs. Oops, let's make that one actually black because I cannot let my OCD go like this. And then we have a pipe that runs, let's say, in the middle. Doesn't matter if it's in the middle, in flow, or it will always be in the middle, but it doesn't matter if your model is there. You're actually simulating the storage, not the actual physical properties, because I don't I'm not I don't believe I'm the best person to explain this. But I think it's a 1D analysis, not a 2D analysis, I believe. So if we have a 150 mil pipe and let's say we have 100 mil on either side of the pipe. So basically we have something, let's draw the permeable paving. So we've got that permeable paving and then we've got, usually probably you have seen this before. This is how usually you show the permeable paving, right? So basically you need to figure out the area of this times the length. So in my case is, and let's do it very quickly, just to be, be more accurate. So it's 150 mil plus 100 on each side. So let's say 200. That's 350 mil times, what do we say the length is? 39.5. So that is 13.82. So at zero, I'll put 13.82. And then at 450, I'll keep it like that, 13.8. Uh, and then at 900, because we need that much cover, we'll put the area of the car park. So in my case, if I go back to my calculator, so we've got 39 point, let's say five meters length of car park times 4.8, which is the width, not width, the length of the car park. So that would be give me 189. So if I type 189.6, can see this odd shape was created. So let's remove the invert level from here. And you can see we're getting slowly where we want. So now that means I need to choose a 451 here. And that's it. It will go 451 and then go all the way to the top. Now, obviously, we need to fix our link. We said 900 mil cover. So what I would recommend is figure out your start invert level, 900 mil below the car park. And then you have a length. So let's say, let's do some math. So if I have 100 cover level, minus 0 0.9, minus a 150 mil pipe, 98.95, and then minus 39.5 divided by gradient of 350. That means the invert level of this downstream pipe or the upstream of this pipe needs to be 98.83. So 98.83. And then if I go back to the storage so just can view it so you can see i'm almost at one meter so because of the crossfall now obviously i stop here my car park because from 500 to a meter that is basically my porous paving and this is just to add the co the protection for the pipe so if i go to 3d and just let's view it you can see that now it looks more basically what you're trying to simulate. However, an important note is to, that you need to know is that water basically distributes through the green area freely within basically it the water will distribute freely within the structure and the under drain KS value will not act as a throttle basically oh because you have 150 mill pipe at 0.6 will act as a throttle. This is more for information. So for you on where you PDF the report, you can see all that information. So 
you need to bear in mind that when you're modeling any kind of storage structure, at least for porous paving and rain garden, it's basically the you're modeling the storage and the pipe and the other drain, the KS values of all everything we've added. It's just for information only, and they will not restrict. Oh, the water will slowly get into perforated pipe because. I once, with a good friend of mine, we had the discussion, we were like, okay, how do we know what's the permeability rate of a perforated pipe? It's like, surely each manufacturer has a different permeability because the holes where they drill them, where they place them, the perforated pipe is different from each other. So therefore, we said we actually, as drainage engineers, we should completely ignore that and we should just assume that the car park is just for storage only and not for for a feature to slow down water. So basically, these are the things that you need to know when you're modeling the porous paving. I don't think, obviously, you can add your intended treatment train. So in our case, it will be probably like a permeable surface. And yeah, and you can obviously add the areas here. For example, it should be a car park, for example. Let's see where is the car park. Short, long-term car parking. There you go. If you found this tutorial useful, hit the like button and drop me a comment below so we can beat the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.